So you may have noticed there was no sort of intros today coming out. There was a reason for that. When I came down the beach, I saw a boat in the bay, which I haven't seen before. And it was still dark. At first, all I saw was a, a boat out there. And I thought, that's interesting, you don't see boats, well you very rarely see boats out, there's one or two that go out, but you know the ones. And, um, yeah, I saw a boat going around the bay, stopping, darting off, stopping, I thought I'd, um, sort of go down a bit more stealthily, so I, that's why I didn't bother filming or anything. Just wanted to get down and get out there, and just so I could get a good look at the boat, see what it was, who it was, or what it was. And, uh, yeah, I accomplished that. I even managed to get them on film, so. But the thing is, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. But I don't know that boat, and there has been some strange goings on around, so. You've got to be a bit more vigilant these days, unfortunately. You can't just go out and, you know, see boats and not worry about it. Now you've got to, with the last couple of years, you've got to pay attention. But there was somebody else out, and he's seen them as well, so. Whether they were legit or not, I don't know. But like I say, it's always worth knowing who's around at that time of morning in the dark. Because, like I say, it is an odd thing to see. I mean, I go out, I've been going out for years at dawn, I always do. And, yeah, like I say, it's very unusual to see another boat, especially at that time. You see them at night sometimes, because they're in the evening, because they're fishing out there maybe, but not early morning. Right, let's, uh, we're going to listen to pots. I've come down here. I, I just carried on after I did all the stealthy stuff this morning and I carried on down here and we're going to lift a couple of sets and we're going to head back and do those and we're basically going to do in pots because I've got to get them done before the tide gets too high and I need my seat so I haven't potted here for a while and I also noticed other people haven't potted here for a while so I thought Give it a go again. I did try earlier on, but it didn't didn't really catch much here. We'll see. Oh, there's a lobster in there. Yes. Excellent. And it's big enough. paid off coming here again. There we go. Nice one. Uh, just a little while here with a couple of crowd. But now you see that's why I use RAS. <laughs> Tip me down a bit she might be a little bit Fiddler.
pace on these toes as well. Baiting to get a conga, so that's good. I just want the one. So, yeah, look at this pot here. Hopefully, this pot's a lot further ahead. There you go, it's not a giant, but I mean, it's not too bad, so it's got a decent set of claws. But it looks like it's going to be the best we're going to get this year. I say the best we're going to get, we've had a couple of big ones, but I mean, they're very rare, far and few between these days. Right, um, where am I going to put this one? I'll put it in the box for now. Yeah, then we've just got eels. That's a 
thing though, the bait came out of the freezer, so it's fresh bait. And that's why you get so many congas. The bait's fresh. They're always going in there. do is we'll keep the larger conga and we'll put the smaller one back. The small ones are always awkward to get out. Can't get enough of the curve on the tail. Try and lift them up. Hold them quite often, they'll go backwards, he says. So it goes forwards just because I'm filming it. <laughs> That's too small. And conga number five. Ugh. A lobster in there as well. that one. Get it out there before the conga thick and smashes up. Oops, that can happen. Nice. 